In this video, you and I get to take a closer look at the concepts of scalability and elasticity. And this same concept applies if we're doing in-house virtualization or for using cloud services. And so in this diagram, I have three physical hosts, ESXi 1, 2, and 3. And on them, I've got a variety of virtual machines that are running. So behind the scenes, we have some connectivity into the physical world, maybe a couple different networks there. And on those networks, we may have directory services and storage. And for fault tolerance, we'll put in there as well. And so it's the hypervisor function that's providing the environment for these VMs to run. So maybe right here we have our Windows 2019 server, and we're running an application on that server. So let's imagine this server is starting to become overwhelmed. And as a result, we look at it and say, oh no, what can we do to make it better? What we could do is we could go ahead and we could increase the resources that this virtual machine is given. So if this device has 100 CPUs and two terabytes of RAM, we could increase the resources that this virtual machine is going to get. And by doing so, we could potentially support more people, or we could also bring up additional VMs. So we could say, you know what, uh, instead of just having one server, we're gonna have uh, server two and server three and server four and server five and server six and server seven and server eight and server nine. And then we could use a load balancer. So when people go to the IP address, the virtual IP address of the load balancer, the load balancer is then making the decision based on keeping track of those VMs about which server that client's going to go to. So maybe the first one goes here, and the next one goes here, the next one goes here, and so forth. So that'd be an example of scaling up, having more servers that are providing that functionality, as well as increasing an individual virtual machine's resources that it's getting from the hypervisor and from the host. So scalability is great. Now, <laughs> what's the negative side of what we just talked about? The negative side is that if we had to do all that manually, like, you know, spinning up the additional machines or going in and specifying that these virtual machines had more resources, we could end up with the same result of having these nine virtual machines all running the same service and then the load balancing distributing between them. However, what if we no longer need that many systems? We could then go ahead and start taking these down. So we could go ahead and disable or take down these servers that are not needed. The load balancer would keep in touch with the ones that are still running and then load balance across the remaining. So scalability is all about meeting the demand by increasing the resources available for that demand. As we mentioned, the number of servers and or the resources that one of those virtual machines has that's acting as a server. Now, ideally, if it was automated where we have 10 users that are hitting it, it stays the same. And then we have, like say a thousand users that are hitting it, then it automatically brings up more servers on demand, that my friend is elasticity, <laughs> where we don't have to do it manually. So it brings all the servers up that are needed. And then if the demand goes back down, it can automatically reduce the amount of resources that are allocated for that function. So the scalability is the ability to meet the demand and elasticity is the concept of doing it in an automated fashion without a human getting involved and individually bringing up or standing up new VMs. And let's talk about some benefits of software as a service. <laughs> as a customer, we're just using the application, the service. We don't have to worry about any of the infrastructure whatsoever for scalability. They take care of it for us. The service provider is in charge of that. Whereas if this was all on-prem and we're responsible for everything, including virtualization and the physical networking, the storage and everything else, we'd want to have a solution in place that allows for the scalability and elasticity if we're doing it all ourselves. But again, one of the benefits of using cloud services is we can put somebody else in charge of that, even with infrastructure as a service. And cloud service providers use different elements. For example, Google has their solution, Amazon has their solution, Microsoft has their solution for cloud services. So for a moment, we can just cross off ESXi, which is a VMware solution. So with infrastructure as a service, the service provider is taking care of all this stuff down here. And with infrastructure as a service, all we have to worry about and deal with is the individual VMs. And then we can network those together and configure the communications between them. So we could have one VM act as, for example, a web server, another VM act as a database server. And we're in total charge of that if we're doing infrastructure as a service. And for an organization who neither wants or needs the infrastructure as a service, they can just purchase software as a service to get the end result of what they were after. And for customers who are using software as a service, they don't have to worry about any of those systems, any of those virtual machines. They are simply a consumer of the software. A great example, again, being Salesforce or any kind of a Google service like Gmail. Case in point, when's the last time a Gmail user ever wondered about where their server was? <laughs> they don't care. They don't know. It's in the cloud being supported by Google. And one of the great things about infrastructure as a service that includes scalability and elasticity is that the user doesn't have to be in charge manually of saying, I want this server and this server and this server to all come up and be active. And then later I want just the first server to be running. 
With Elasticity, we can allow the system to go ahead and automatically bring up new servers as needed. And as far as being charged, that's a US dollar sign there, as far as being charged for the services, the service provider is just gonna charge them for what they use. So for maybe 17 hours, they had three servers running. For 82 hours, they just had one server running. And so they can charge the user like it's a utility bill. You pay for what you use, which is great because then the customer doesn't have to pay for the physical servers and the initial cost if they were doing it on their own. They can just pay for the services that they're using based on how much they used. And in the next video, I'd like to chat with you just a little bit more about some of the security implementations in general about using cloud services. So we'll take a look at that next. I'll see you there in just a moment. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.